You've seen the headlines again and again and again. Inflation is here. It's time to freak out. Or is it? Today, we're going to look at what are some of the best inflation hedges that you can make today to protect your money and protect your portfolio. We're going to find out what those are and a whole lot more on the latest Good Financial Sense podcast. This is episode 156. What is going on, GFC fam, Wealth Hacker Nation? It is time to make your life more with your always cheerful, always grateful host, Jeff Rose. And what we're talking about today is we're continuing this conversation regarding inflation. Just because it's funny when I'm checking my news feed, that's that that's not all I see, but I'm seeing a lot more discussion about inflation. Now, in a previous episode, episode 151, I mentioned a, an, an inflation hedge, and we're going to get to that one as we go further on in this episode. But th there is some concern here. And just to give you some of the headlines that I have came across, and you've probably seen something similar, I, I'm guessing, just searching for rising inflation, we see critics say corporate greed is making inflation worse. U.S. consumer spending accelerates wage inflation rising. Fed's preferred inflation gauge climbs 6.6% from a year earlier. And that on top of, here's the ones I saw, I think it was last week, consumer prices rise 8.5% in March slightly higher than expected. And then consumer fears over inflation hit a record high. Everybody is afraid. Everybody is freaking out. <laughs> now, is this really the case? Like, is this really happening? Are you stressing out about inflation? It seems when I go to Twitter, I don't even want to show you uh, some of the tweets that I see about people blaming the president, the current president, the former president on inflation, uh, hyperinflation is being thrown out there. And yeah, like we have seen the cost of gas increase, although we have seen a bit of a pullback and inflation has increased. I mean, that is evident. And so we know it's here. Now the question is, what can we do or is there anything that we can do to protect ourselves? And that's what I wanted to cover today. And I want to offer seven different inflation hedges that you can take advantage of today. Now, as always, or at least as usual, if you want the written form of this podcast, we do have a corresponding blog post, which I'll have in the description. If you read the title right now, it says five best hedges. This is actually being updated to the seven, maybe more, depending on where, where this podcast goes on the different inflation hedges. So what are we talking about? What are some of the different things that you can do right now? So let's go ahead and talk about the first one, because this is the one that comes up the most often, and that is gold. Now, Gold is typically thought to be an inflation hedge. And for the most part, there, there is some truth to that. We always talk about gold, right? And, and we always think about like how the monetary system is backed by gold. But the truth is that the U.S. has not used the gold standard since 1933. Uh, that's been a hot minute, right? That has been a hot minute. That being said, gold typically keeps its price. You know, gold keeps its value. The issue or the concern with gold is, are you buying it at the right time? Because people think of buying gold, they think of stability, they think of like, oh, I, I want to buy a, a, an asset that is physical, that I can touch, you know, it is protected. Um, but take a look at this article. And once again, this will all be in the show notes. So I was like, just doing some research and on Investopedia. And, you know, it does say here that with in rising inflation, gold typically appreciates. Okay, well, that that's good. I mean, that's what we want, right? However, gold isn't a perfect inflation hedge. Other factors can drive its prices, which can fluctuate wildly from year to year. And there have been several examples that, I mean, that I've witnessed where gold has been extremely, I'll say, volatile. And just to give you an example, like I'm going to pull up the one year chart for those that are watching this on the YouTube channel, but check this out. Like this is year to date. 
And it, for those that aren't seeing this, I mean, this looks like a mountain range. And this is just for 2022. Let's back this up a year. Um, as you can see, you you can, you know, gold hit a high of around 191 uh, in the beginning of March. And the low, it's been about 161, maybe 150. Yeah, about 161 has been the low. So we're talking like a $30 price variance between the low to the high. And this is just in the last year. We go out the five-year mark. You can see we're gold back in 2017, trading at 122. Like that would have been a good time to buy. But if you look at the middle August, summer of 2020, it hit 190. It hit back there again earlier, I guess, this year. Uh, but as you can see, like there is definitely a bad time to buy gold. Here is the max chart going back all the way to 2005. And we're looking at gold at $42. And by the way, I'm looking at the Spider Gold Trust ETF. That's what I'm using for these prices. So yes, can gold be an inflation hedge? It could be, but if you're buying it at the wrong time, it actually may end up hurting you. So tread carefully with gold. Number two on the list is real estate, but not hard real estate where we're buying physical property. What we're talking about is real estate investment trust. Now, if you're in a real estate investor, we could go down that route. I, I would definitely recommend real estate. Definitely certain types, depending on where you live, commercial property might not be a good investment, you know, unless you are in an area like Nashville where you got a lot of people moving in. But what I'm talking about here is real estate investment trust that is more liquid. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do this. And, and one way is you could buy real estate investment trust as a stock. Like there are different stocks that you can buy that basically have a bunch of different holdings. Like that is an option. An option that I've talked about several times here on the podcast and on the YouTube channel and also on the blog, just because it's super dang easy, is Fundrise, which is a pri I don't want to say a privately traded, but yeah, it's a privately traded REIT, uh, which basically means you have less fees involved, more transparency. And I've got a ton of content on Fundrise that you can look into. But the cool thing about Fundrise is that you don't have to have a lot of money to get started. They actually have a starter portfolio that you can get started for like $10. Uh, their other portfolio, which I forget the name, I think it's like $1,000, which gives you a little bit more access to maybe some other different investments. So that is an option that you can look at. Another option could be buying a Vanguard ETF. Uh, there is the symbol VNQ, which is the Vanguard Real Estate Index Fund, currently trading at $105.28 at the time of this recording. It is an option. Basically, if you're buying this ETF, you are tracking the real estate index. So basically all types of real estate in the US. Now for me, I wouldn't mind putting a little bit into this ETF, but I, I do like the idea of doing something more like Fundrise, which you're getting, I don't say actual properties because you're not actually owning them, but you're crowdfunding. And I just love that. I just feel like that helps out with the risk. Uh, you're not putting all your money into one investment. You are crowdfunding with other investors. And please check out the other content I've done on Fundrise. They have so much transparency where you can see the holdings. Like what are the properties that you own? And they do commercial property. They do residential. They have apartments. Uh, they have so many different types of real estate. And that's what I do like is the diversified. And you have an active manager that is buying and selling on these properties. Whereas if you're going the whole... Vanguard ETF route, like that's just an, a broad index. So you're going to get, yes, you're, it's going to be diversified, but it's not going to be as advantageous, you know, looking for opportunities as opposed to somebody like Fundrise is looking to optimize their returns as, as much as they can. Now, the next option might not be as attractive, as sexy, uh, just because of where interest rates are, but buying some sort of aggregate bond index. And I mean, is this something that I'm going to do? Um, probably not. Is it something that you could do? Absolutely. You know, some of the pros here is that you are getting diversification. It is good for passive income. You do have consistency. You've got a track record. But as far as the cons go, you do have that subject to interest rate or sensitivity to interest rate fluctuations and also low reward. And as always, there's always 
different options, different choices. One of them is the iShares Core US Aggregate Bond ETF, currently trading at $103. But talking about the whole low reward, right? So it's actually look at the returns and I'm pulling this straight from the iShare website. Let me move myself out of the way so you actually see these returns. So the 10 year return, 2.18%. 2.18%. There is that low, low uh, return, maybe not a lot of risk. So, I mean, we got, we got that taken care of. Uh, as far as like she, the, the yield that the, this thing pays, I mean, this is a bond, so it's not paying a dividend yield, but it is paying a yield based off of the bonds that it owns. The current 30-day SEC yield as of April 27, 2022, is 2.78%. Now, if that's the yield and the return is actually below that over the last 10 years, or even you can see the one year, it's down negative 4.18%. That's because we've seen a increase in interest rates, which then has a decrease in bond prices. And this is a really hard concept for people to understand. But when interest rates go up, bond prices go down. Yes, you're still getting the yield, but your principal could actually be less if you are looking to cash in your bonds. That's a really hard concept for some investors to, like I said, understand. And when they see that, wait, I have bonds and I'm losing money. Like, why am I losing money on bonds? Like that doesn't make any sense. Well, that is why that's not a fun conversation to have after the fact. Like this is something that you need to understand if you are getting into bonds, even bond ETFs. But that is an option if you're looking to hedge against inflation. Now, the next option, and we could slice and dice this a few different ways, but it, you need to have, if you're looking to combat inflation, you, you got to be in the stock market. Like you, you have to have some exposure to stocks, to equities. Now, for some of you listening to this, you're like, okay, I understand that, but I'm not comfortable going all in the stock market. And I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that at all. All I am suggesting is that you, you got to have some exposure to stocks, not 100%, maybe not 80, but one way, kind of like a happy medium, is looking at a 60 40 portfolio. And for those that this might be new for you, maybe you, you hear this all the time like, ooh, 60 40, 80 20, 40 60. You know, what is that? actually mean we're talking about here so a 60 40 portfolio is going to have a 60 percent stocks and then 40 percent bonds and even with that you can you don't have to have all tech stocks you could have financials you could have healthcare you could have consumer discretionary uh, you could have a blend and if this is really freaking you out you don't have to choose the stock so this could be a makeup of stock ETFs and also bond ETFs. And you could do this through platforms like Betterment or M1 Finance. Uh, you could actually even do this like on Robinhood or Ally, E-Trade, I mean, any of these. But the whole idea here is that having some exposure to the stock market, you know, we, we've all seen the numbers, you know, over the lifetime of stocks, the stock market has averaged 8%, 9%. I mean, here in the last however many years, since we've had such an amazing bull run, I mean, we're seeing closer to that 10% return. Now that's going to average out. And we're seeing that now with the market, its recent pullback. But if the market has averaged over 8%, adding some bonds to your portfolio, that is going to decrease that overall return but it also should help smooth out some of those bumpy rides. Because the more exposure you have to bonds, you're not gonna see as big of a drop. You're still gonna see a drop, but not nearly as much. And there is a ton of research that shows that having a 60-40 blend, uh, what here we call an environmentally balanced portfolio, it does offer more consistency over down markets, especially with inflation. So that is one option that you should consider. All right, moving on to the next option. And the next two options, we're actually going to be referring to a government website, which really sounds insane that we're talking about protecting ourselves from inflation 
Uh, and we're actually going to rely on the government to help us out. I know it's crazy. It's crazy talk right now. But uh, the next option would be or could be treasury inflated protected securities, otherwise known as TIPS. So these are one of the different types of bonds that you can buy from the government. TIPS come in maturities of 5, 10 or 30 years. With these, there is a risk of deflation. Uh, so please keep that in mind. So some of the pros, low risk. Treasury bonds, are they're backed by the government. That's good, I guess. <laughs> Index for inflation tips will automatically increase in principle to compensate for inflation. Also, interest payments keep pace with inflation. Okay, cons, low rate of return. The interest rate is typically very low, and they have been low as inflation has been really, really low. And then also, most desirable in times of high inflation. Hey, that's what we're talking about, tips. So if you actually go to treasurydirect.gov, and I almost think it's hilarious, but if for those that can see this on the uh, the YouTube channel here, what I think is hilarious, I mean, for a guy that has you know a website, I like design, like I like a good looking website. And if you go to treasurydirect.gov, I mean, this thing looks like it was created when the internet first, first was invented. I mean, it is so outdated. I promise you, this is not a scam site. Uh, this thing is for real, like this is really it. So treasurydirect.gov and you can learn about tips here. This is actually where you will purchase tips as well. Now, so tips is an option and the one big difference between tips and the other option, which is series I bonds. So they have a nice little, little uh, FAQ here, which for those that wanna know, what is the difference between tips and or I bonds? Well, let's just read some of these so that you can see how they differ. I think the, the, the big difference between tips versus I bonds and why I bonds can pay more is because with I bonds, you have to hold them, you know, at least for a year. And if you sell them prematurely, then you have to give, give back some of your interest where you, I guess you don't get the interest. It's almost like a penalty, like cashing out a CD too early. Whereas with tips, they are marketable, which means they can be bought and sold on the secondary market. So that that's one thing. Uh, there is a minimum of $100. I don't think that there is, uh, well, there is auction, non-competitive bidding up to $5 million. So you can buy a lot of tips. <laughs> it goes up to $5 million. Whereas with I-bonds, currently it is $10,000 per social security number per calendar year. If you are doing a paper through through your tax refund, you can go up to an additional $5,000. Now, if you do have a living trust or some sort, of, some sort of trust that has its own tax ID, that is another way that you can get around it, or not around it, but it requires an extra step so that you can purchase more I-bonds. And the other difference is how the rates are determined. With tips, the interest rate is determined every single month. So that that's when they it updates constantly. Whereas with I bonds, the rate is reassessed or reassigned every six months. And that's why there's been a lot of talk right now about I bonds because I, I bonds, I think right now are paying about 7.12%. But based on where the CPI index just went, we, we know that they should reset. And we're looking at I bonds being close to almost 10%, 9.6% is what we are looking at with series I bonds. So that is another inflation hedge. And that is the one which I'm, I'm even shocked to say this because I've been so, so much into crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, been doing a lot of crypto bot trading. Uh, I'm looking at DeFi as other options, you know, just earning the yield off of my BlockFi and Celsius accounts. I, I've been so big on that. The, the fact that you can earn eight, 9%, closer to 10%, and it's guaranteed, not guaranteed. I mean, because all that Bitcoin crypto saving stuff, is, none of that's guaranteed, right? Like this is backed by the government. Could the government fail? Of course they could. Does that mean that they're going to? I, I mean, there, there, are, <laughs> there are a lot of things that I would expect to fail before the government did. So I, I share all that to say that I am, I'm really looking at, at tips and, I, and I've seen other advisors that I follow online uh, and I'm seeing a lot of chatter about it. And it's like, well, why wouldn't you right now, if you have the money 
And this is definitely more for a, a I won't say long term, you know, the, but this is not like, hey, I want to put my money in here for six months, nine months, a year and then pull it out. This is like, hey, I'm going to put my money in. I'm going to take advantage of where inflation is, especially with the market having a recent sell off uh, and just take advantage of a, a pretty good dang good opportunity. So this is definitely the inflation hedge that I would have you look at right now. And you can find out all this if you go to treasurydirect.gov and you'll find out all the information about tips and or series I bonds there. And just to close this out, I, I, I want to recommend or look at Bitcoin. I don't think there's been enough, enough history here to look at Bitcoin or cryptocurrency as an inflation hedge. And especially with what we've seen, the price of Bitcoin, you know, it has been just as volatile as the stock market, as gold here, at least in the last year or so. I will say I did discover this article, which I'm showing here on the YouTube channel about uh, this company that's offering a exchange traded product. Um, 21 shares is a major issuer of cryptocurrency exchange traded products. And it's launching a new ETP uh, to enable inflation hedge that is basically a hybrid between gold and Bitcoin. And I, I just personally love this because it's like we're, we're merging old school, you know, for everybody that, that said, oh, hey, we need to you need to buy gold if you want to hedge against inflation. Whereas everybody nowadays is like, no, no, like we need to do like Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. So we're just like seeing a merge of the two, like old school versus new school. And I don't know. I just, I just think that's pretty cool. Now I'm not ready to put any money in this right now. I just wanted to bring another option that exists out there in case you, you want to take a look. So once again, we have a hybrid ETP of Bitcoin and gold as another option as an inflation hedge. So we talked about several different options that you consider, and you might already be doing some of these. Looking at your current portfolio right now, you know how much do you have in stocks? How much do you have in bonds? Just doing an analysis. And if you don't know exactly, maybe you know in like one account, but do you know across your entire portfolio? That's where I would look at signing up for something like personal capital, get all your accounts in there, have them aggregated so that you can do a portfolio analysis to see how much stocks, how much bond exposure that you have. iShares, um, or excuse me, iBonds, that would be something else I would have you look at. Before you do any of this, consult with a financial professional, consult with your tax preparer, your CPA, before you make any moves on your portfolio. You definitely don't wanna find yourself in a tax situation that you were not planning on. And if always, be sure to check out the blog because we have a corresponding blog post that shares everything I just outlined and a whole lot more. We'll also have other great content on there to help you accelerate your wealth building and take charge of your financial life. As always, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.